I remember liking this level a lot more the first time I played it way back. Uh, okay, we're out of the prop room, and now we're in a room where that has an important item we, that we definitely don't want to miss. The shotgun, because it isn't a survival horror game until you've got a shotgun. And that's easy to miss, because there's no real marks or anything that says that there's an item over there. Here's the uh, ID card we've been looking for. So now, we can get back to Cunningham and Yorg and see what they're up to. As I was saying, I remember this, I remember liking this level a lot more when I first played it. I kind of thought, I thought the mystery was kind of cool, actually. Oh, and by the way, uh, I mentioned previously that there would be a level where there's a character you can save, and they don't actually tell you that. Well, this is, that's this level. There is a character that you can save in this level, they don't tell you this. You think that the only characters you can save are Eriko's friends, but there is a character here that you can save. And if you do not save this character, then you do not solve the mystery of Killer Man. You do not unveil who Killer Man is unless you save this character, because apparently Eriko cannot figure it out for herself. She needs someone else to explain it for her. But anyway, we're going back to the monitor room where Yorg and Cunningham were going, and we'll just see what they think of this dead body business. Don't know why they made it such a long walk, since we have to go up this hallway more than once. You are right about the body. This is a homicide case. Somebody killed him. You should have seen Manager Cunningham's face. He turned deathly white and rushed over to the main office. But never mind about him. Here, come take a look at this. It's a killer star. That's the mark of a killer man. This logo suggests that a killer man is actually the murderer. But here's the catch. Killer man doesn't really exist. He's a fictional character they created for this theme park. It's hard to believe this could happen, but we have a real dead body here with a killer mark on it. All we have to do now is figure out what it all means. So Yorg Yor will be uh, examining this. And guess where we get to go? We get to go straight back where we came, down that long hallway again. So, while we're on our way, let's just recap. Yorg established that the star is the mark of the Killer Man. We know from, previous, from the previous video that a Killer Man costume has been stolen. So we can assume that someone is dressed as Killer Man and dressed and uh, killed that staff worker. But why would someone do this? And somehow apparently Cunningham has made it back to the control room e even though we just ran just ran past this. Killer man. Jason, it must be Jason. <laughs> Yorg, come look at him. Look. Manager Cunningham. And look, another killer star. Cunningham was shouting out the names Killer Man and Jason. I wonder if the murderer is Jason. I don't know about that. If Jason is the murderer, then why would he bother reporting to Cunningham about a missing killer man's costume? Um, I don't think a murderer would report the costume is missing, especially if he was going to wear the thing. Wow, Yorg. You sound like Lieutenant Colombo or something. Me? Oh, come on. You think so? Anyway, I wonder why the killer is killing one worker after another. The first thing we should do is find Jason. I just saw Jason heading toward the backyard a couple of minutes ago. But that place is restricted to authorized personnel only. We can't get in there. So Yorick says we can't enter that area because we're not an authorized employee. But we just happen to have an authorized employee lying on the floor right here, so we'll take his pass card. Now basically the way this level works is Eriko acts as the Watson to Yorg's homes. 
he pretty much acts as the detective for this level. Oh, and over here is the door to the morgue. It's locked right now. We'll be getting in there later. Right now, we want to get into even further backstage using Cunningham's code. So Cunningham is dead. That's one of our suspects down. Two to go. So our suspects remaining are Jason and Yorg. Now Yorg's going to be coming with us, even though he's not actually going to help us in battle or anything. We'll only see him during the cutscenes, but he is with us. So one suspect is nowhere to be seen, and the other one is accompanying us. And I don't know why there are traps back here. So it looks like Killer Man is somewhere above us, doing what he does best. And here's a machine apparently for abandoning a carcass. The settings are very Dengar and dead. Don't really know what these machines are used for, but... We want to stay away from anything that's very Dengar, I think. Again, it doesn't make much sense that there are traps back here, since this is backstage and that's where the employees are working. Now, we're not actually going to be able to jump up in, into that hallway. We'll be getting into that hallway from another direction later on. But York felt that Jason went this way, so that's where we're going. And shortly, we're going to be getting our first look at the Killer Man. There aren't many traps back here, and I think that actually uh, makes it a little easier to run right into them. Because they're long stretches of nothing where you're just going to keep on running. So, great, let's continue looking after, looking for that guy that apparently just uh, ripped a woman into shreds. Let's go find him. And that character, I believe, was Dogs from uh, Blue Stinger. Well, that's apparently what those carcass abandoning machines do. <laughs> Don't be scared from that. That was just Dummy Man. We can take him. So we continue moving on backstage into strangely technological areas that are ill-defined as to what their function is. Seriously, I don't actually know what any of this stuff is supposed to do. Cool. 
Really? Attacked by fireflies? That's the killer man! Look at the way he jumped! You know, I remember reading that Jason used to be a professional gymnast. So it makes sense that he could pull off these killer man stunts. So does that make Jason the murderer? No, it's not right to jump to conclusions. There's not enough evidence to prove anything yet. Well, sure, Jason was a pro athlete, so maybe he was capable of making a 20 to 30 foot vertical leap. Or maybe it had to do with the $20 million costume.